Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast hello, hello, sitting hello. right at the intersection of weapons, action, the military, and pop culture. Hello, hello. Today is an exciting day because, A, I'm very excited for this one. New episode of the week. Yep. That's exciting. Welcome back. Uh, I'm glad you made it. Sorry about that thing that happened uh, a couple days ago. I'm glad you made it through. Don't worry. It'll be all right in the end. What is that? I'm just saying somebody probably it's like I'm oh, pre like you're comforting the somebody in Are the you audience. Breaking the, yeah, the fourth wall? yeah. I'm I'm just I'm letting you know that I'm there for them in that traumatic experience that occurred in their life. I'm sure they will recover soon. Uh, we'll always have good memories of that family member that might may or may not have passed away. Okay. Well, thanks for that, man. <laughs> Way to put it out there in the universe. So now it's gonna happen. I'm, happen I'm a comforting force. Okay. Well, this episode. We are back with more to add to the very prestigious. More shoulder movements more for shoulder those that movements, are watching. More gyration. More gyration. For the vehicle wish list. Vehicle wish list, man. Yeah, if you guys don't remember, we did back, back, way back, way when. back, to back, back. Yeah, yeah, one of our OG episodes. Yeah, actually. well, it was like, I think it was like episode six or something. <laughs> I don't remember, but. I don't even care. Um, I'm going to actually confirm that. I don't even care. I care, actually. It was episode eight. Episode eight, and we are now on episode forty-six. First Dude, of all, everybody we're slanging give these things out. A hand, everybody, give themselves a hand because we're at forty-six yeah. now. That's Listen, awesome. You know what? It's time to get out of your car. Actually, yeah. it's time to get back into your car. Get back in your car because we're doing a vehicle wish list. <laughs> exactly, but we know that pop culture is a giant anomaly. It's yes. constantly changing. It's constantly evolving. New things it's keep an, being introduced. An amorphous to it. anomaly, amoeba. Yes, and. We have to stay current. We can't just do something and just forget about it. That's one of the good things about this kind of format is that we can do this over and over and over again. Yeah. Because they're just going to keep coming out with awesome vehicles and awesome video games. Yeah, or there's ones that we miss, and or there's ones movies. that we completely forget about. Right. Like, no yeah. way. That's awesome. Yeah. And I found myself doing a lot of that this episode. So what we're going to do is we're going to revisit the vehicle wish list and add to it and update it. So here is our new and improved wish list. Yes. What do you got? You want to start? Yeah, go Let's ahead. Let's do it, man. I got the first one up here because I got a lot of crap for this last time when we didn't do this and ever since then uh, for not adding it to the list. But the Normandy from the Mass Effect franchise, folks, Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. And uh, I don't know. I haven't played Andromeda yet, but I'm on 3 on stream. Uh, playing it on Mondays right now. But uh, the Normandy, it's the command ship that Shepard flies all around the universe in. Uh, it, has a, it gets upgrades from... From game to game, mm. but uh, it's awesome, man. It's where everybody congregates. You got the command deck, you got the engineering deck, you got the crew deck, and then you got up at the top, you got your. This is a big quarters. old vehicle. This yeah. isn't just like you know a two seater. Oh no, no, this is off. This is this is your mobile command post, man. That's big, uh, and it's an icon. It's got an iconic design. If you look it up, um, yeah, it's it's super super cool, and it's just uh, it's your it's you know it's the van from the A team. It's uh you know it's it's the. It's with you every step of the way. It's almost like it's its own character. Where do you park it? Anywhere you want, baby. How yeah. big is it? It's big. It's huge. It's yeah, it's, no, it's ginormous. It's a, it's a, you know, like a starship or something like that. It's got about, I don't know, from look, from the looks of it, it's got like a, maybe a forty to fifty man crew or something like that. Yeah. You only ever so see you, like ten people. You but, can't ballet <laughs> that thing. Then. No, you, you can't beat ballet. that in. And, yeah. and of course, it's got uh, the greatest pilot in all the universe, Joker, uh, voiced by Seth Green. Uh, Joker is the pilot, and then you got Edie. Uh, who's the AI for the uh -huh. ship, uh, who later becomes a physical manifestation. Seth and Green, uh, tiny little boy from Without yeah. a Paddle. Yep, little guy. Yeah, teeny that guy. That guy. Yeah, wow, Seth really? Green. And he, yeah, and he's obviously he's known for Wait, a lot. That, that is what you're going to bring up. Without a Paddle. Without yeah. a Paddle. That's Without a Paddle. <laughs> so much. He was in Austin Powers. He was in an yeah, episode of The yeah, X-Files in the first season. Chicken. He's yeah, been he acting a long time. And didn't he make Without that? Without a Paddle. What was Without the puppet? What was the puppet? Uh, one robot chicken, right? No, but like it was natural, like puppets, and they're being like crude and stuff. Eat the feebles? No, it's like Joe the Rabbit or something like that, or Jack the Rabbit, or Seth Green. Uh, so now you went the other way on the pendulum. You went too far. <laughs> oh, it People should know. Greg the Bunny. Greg the Bunny. Greg. Yeah, you're. I think it only ever Joe had one rabbit, season. Greg so, the Bunny. Yeah. But okay, so, so yeah, it's cool. 
He but anyway, <laughs> he's Joker. He's and he's Joker. the pilot of the Normandy, and he's awesome. He can get us in and out of any situation. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, so far. We, I haven't played to the end of Mass Effect 3, so don't don't ruin it for me. But okay. he's awesome. He's cool. And the Normandy's amazing. And Shepard's I Am the Best Shepherd. I mean, is there anything the about the Normandy that, like, has... Is it, like, super fast? Is it well, super I mean, reliable? Or is it just... It's just the ship that... Well, it's an iconic uh, ship, but throughout the course of the series in each game, you get uh, chances to upgrade it. Mm. And, you know, the thing about Mass Effect is the choices you make within the game affect the ending and the outcome of the game. So one thing that was told to me, especially in Mass Effect 2, is you got to get all the upgrades to the ship. Otherwise, it changes the outcome, and you might lose some of your characters, you know? so uh, That's kind of cool. Yeah, you get, I mean, like shield upgrades and weapon upgrades and all that kind of stuff. But no, mostly, you know, that's kind of incidental. Mostly, it's the iconic design, the fact that Joker's like your main man, he's your pilot, yeah. and that it's 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 the ship that Shepard uses to go out and have a massive effect on the universe. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Very cool. Yes. Mm, yes. Well, well, what do you got, huh? Well, I don't know if I can mention mine anymore because Chris is super, super... Is it the... Is, not about the Is idea. it the Limp Bizkit mobile? Is it the Seth Green mobile? <laughs> is it the Seth Green No, Green it's not the Limp Bizkit. It's not from that movie? No, <laughs> it's the N1 Starfighter from Star Wars Episode One. Woo! You know the yellow one that like Anakin like hijacks and somehow oh know, the one he child. fights now this is Pod Race yeah this is Pod Race yeah yeah so that one but I can't I I feel like I can't say it because the real reason I picked it is because it's reintroduced in the book of Boba Fett really yeah oh I see yeah and well I too late now let's talk about it well no you can talk about it just talk about it only in reference to Phantom Menace Phantom Menace Phantom Menace okay okay well the thing. It's super fast. Is it cool in it the Boba Boba? That's so cool. <laughs> dude, I'll be honest. My, you like, make me want to watch the show it, now. That's what, it, it, the entire show got redeemed. Like, wow. I'm, they bring back so many different themes, and you're like, what? <laughs> well, these you're guys. Like, this makes so much. Yeah, they Dave like Filoni the entire... and, and John, um, John Favreau, they really are big Star Wars fans. So. Yo, no, they like really did it justice. Let that's me tell cool. you. Like, I really want to dig into the details of why I specifically <laughs> pl- picked this and what happens with this thing, but I can't because Chris is a Debbie Downer. Well, well but... it's, co- it's cool. It's, I mean, it's from Naboo, right? Yeah. Anakin Skywalker jumps in. It actually has a cool, I, I was looking it up. Hold on. Did you say I'm, I'm a Debbie Downer because I don't want you to spoil a show that hasn't even been out a week? It's been out for over a month. No, Actually, it's on episode has. five. Well, this has been out for. This episode oh. came out last Wednesday. Wednesday? What day is it today? It's, it's Monday. Monday. You gotta so, give me at least like a four week or five to days. Watch. Well, the cool thing is, like, it's it's past the empire, like the timeline, right? There's like Luke Skywalker is still invent, and yeah. like this thing would be considered like a classic car. Yeah, it really would be. Yeah, and yeah. it looks like a classic car. Exactly. So, like, ah, I want to say something <laughs> so bad. <laughs> But it's like it's like, what do you mean? Now I found you something way better. This okay. is a classic. Baby. Okay, okay. Like you want this, and they rebuild it, and it's like fucking. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, that's it. That's it. Try, yeah, that's right. But yeah, the thing is so fast, and it purrs like a kitten. And in in the newer thing, it, like they really give it a little bit more details because back in the the first one, it was just like you know, animation wasn't to where like yeah. Uh, the whole, quite hold up, you know. Yeah, it wasn't quite. They didn't have the technology to really make it do it justice to where like this is a badass thing. But the newer version, it's like. If you just got a V rebuilt a brand new like V8 engine and it's like, <laughs> nice. and you're like, this thing is fast, man. And that's another thing too. Well, that's the, what I was looking up last night is, uh, I think it's Ben Burt, I think is the sound designer from, from way back all the way up until the prequels. Uh, but you know, he would go out and find really interesting, you know, uh, ways to create the sounds, you yeah. know, like for the, like the blasters and stuff is like, so like an electrical tension wire for a tower, like hitting it, you know, that pew, pew, you know, that's how you get. So he yeah, probably watching the sound designers on the sound stage are like, yeah. Banging spoons the Foley together and for stuff like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so a- it's the same kind of thing. You can hear it. It almost sounds like a classic car. It's got that cycling yeah. thing. The yeah. Know. Like the cams going. Like yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. like a starfighter. So it's super cool. Chris, go ahead and just catch up, man, so I can <laughs> so I can talk about it because it's it's so cool. It's it. such a good show now. At first, I had my doubts, and I was like, "This is kind of boring. I don't care." The well, you're Fett. making me believe, man. Yeah, I, I was really like, "I don't care that Boba Fett got rescued by the uh, what is what are those desert folk, the Sand People." Yeah, the Sand People, yeah, the, sand Tuscan, people. the Tuscan, the Tuscan, Tuscan, Ra- yeah. Tuscan Raiders. He gets like he becomes one, and like it's just like this is not cool because <laughs> it's so <laughs> slow. I'm sorry, Chris. Chris is like looking around like. He's such a diehard Sand People fan. Yeah. But anyways. Oh, wait. the, the That would be my first pick on the list. So. Right on, man. Just to end Chris's suffering. All right. We'll move, move on. on. All right. 
So anyway, the book of Boba Fett. No, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, so this one's near and dear to my heart because I've grown up with this this franchise, this series. Uh, I read the manga. You know, the movie came out in like the mid '90s sure. or late '90s, actually. I think when I was in college. But uh, the Fuchikoma from Ghost in the Shell. Fuchikoma. Specifically the manga because I think there's something called the Tachikoma, which is in the animated series Standalone Complex. But they're the basically Tachikoma. it's the Tachikoma yes. Oh, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, but they're basically like little one person tanks uh-huh. they got kind of like spidery legs and stuff like that but they also uh when they're not being manned by a person they have an ai is they, that what those autonomous. are i saw that picture and i was like i have no yeah, idea what yeah that's I'm it, yeah it's beto sitting on top of one of the the fuchikomas uh and so they got little like Gatling guns and cannons. And so they got look like little arms. They kind of look like the little legs. tanks from Metal Slug. You know what I'm talking about? When you yeah, hop. yeah, a little bit like that. You know, th- those are those have treads oh, and yeah, stuff, but they yeah. can jump around. And stuff. Oh, I, and I'm looking. These guys can climb up now. walls. There's a game. There was a Ghost in the Shell video game for the PlayStation One where you were one of these little Fuchikoma guys. You could you can go upside down and and you know all around. that's the cool thing it would change the perspective. So uh-huh. as you as you would go up on a roof, it would change the camera angle too. Oh, Everything really? was opposite. Everything so, was upside down. Uh, but yeah, the cool thing about them is like they have the, they're kind of like comic relief in the series or in mm. the manga cuz they like do their own thing. They're kind of autonomous when they're not being manned by somebody. So they go off in little adventures and goof around and trip all over each other and stuff. They're cute. They're cute. You know, the Japanese are good at the cute stuff. You know, so cute tanks. Only the Japanese can come up with the cute tanks. tanks. We got small tanks. Oh, you like the small tanks? We got the small tanks. Everything's so small. It's a guy. So, I mean, you said they got like Gatling guns. So in the game, because you, I need some ults, man. Oh man! Well, they, I mean, they got Gatling guns, they got rockets and stuff like that. You can, uh, you know, if you, you want to look at some footage and stuff like that, you can. But uh, the the game itself was was not all that great. But yeah. you, the cool thing about it was that you got to pilot these little Fuchikoma tanks. Are they fast? Know? Yeah, they're super fast, and then they're they're very agile. They can jump around. They can, like I said, climb on walls and climb on ceilings and up up the sides of buildings and stuff, which added to the fun of the game. I got uh, it. But uh, anyway, just I I want to get that in there because I feel like. Uh, Anime doesn't get a lot of we don't get a, does get as much love as it could. No, so. it just gets an entire episode. Right, that's what we do. We just give it an entire episode. Yeah. We put it in the corner, and then we say, "Stay there no until we come back for you." Corner. No one puts anime in the corner. Yeah, but uh, uh, well, that's a good one, man. I'm glad. Yeah, you, you're, I, you're slowly putting anime into the yeah, episodes. I've noticed indoctrinating. Indoctrin- you, yep. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm over here about to mention John and <laughs> Wick again because that's what we do in this podcast. What a, ch- what a great choice, actually. Original John Wick. His 1969 Mach 1 Mustang, the one he originally has on the airfield where he's just gripping it and ripping it. Yep. A, that is my dream car. Mm. So, like, if I had, like, how much, how much does the price tag on it? I think they're, like, over, they have to be over six figures for, like, this specific one. Hmm. If I had the money to spend, yeah, I'd get that exact car. It is so cool. Um, are you looking up the spread, uh, yeah. sticker tag on this one? Because obviously they're restored, and it's not a Shelby. I don't know if they had the Shelbys back there. My car guys out there, did they have a 1969 Shelby? I'm pretty sure they did. Or Just like, uh, MotorAuthority.com says it starts at 169,000. Yeah, yep. If I had the Ched, <laughs> that would be like my Sunday car. But that thing is so cool, man. I mean, I'm a, I love, I can appreciate classic cars, mm-hmm. just because you, could, it's just like anything, like. I wonder if this podcast is going to be considered a classic in like a hundred years. I wonder, man, when the aliens have taken over and colonized Earth. Exactly. They, when we're one under maybe one. Maybe it'll be a classic because uh, the aliens I'm thinking of will have taken over and then like disarmed all of humanity. So we're like their slaves. So it's like a novelty for them to listen to when we thought like we had weapons and stuff like that. Yeah. But those are the aliens. I'm you know, that reminds me of my movie plot. Do you remember the one I told you? Know, how much thought have you put into this? Um, Quite a bit. Actually, that I mean, reminds me of my movie plot. I go to the dark web. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, hello. hello. <laughs> have I told you my movie plot? No. I came up with this in Arizona. Remember, you're like, that would be an interesting movie. Oh, yeah. The Time Capsule movie. The Time Capsule yeah, movie. Yeah, so I had an idea for a movie, and it was, uh, I just need a couple of writers. So my movie idea is, because you know Time Capsules, not a lot of people do Time Capsules anymore. Right. And the idea was that 
we bury a time a grandfather buries a time capsule with like a letter and a bunch of fucking guns inside oh, of it. Oh yeah. And or just like and like a piece of like the constitution and whatnot. And then like his son in like thirty or like his grandson or his great grandson in like thirty or forty years and like the entire country is over one, under or the entire world's like under one government now and they yeah. like disarm the people. And they like take away books and all that shit. And then he like stumbles across these coordinates and digs up this this time capsule that has like a bunch of guns in the Constitution. And he's like, wait, you mean you like we used to be free? Yeah. And then he like starts his rebellion and arms him and fights the world power. Yeah, I think that's a great movie. I think it'd be hard to get it financed because of the current cl- 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 yeah. You have to get it. It'd be very, it's very political maybe? thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but I was like, this is such an American movie. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I got pumped up listening to that. That's cool, man. I like what I like about this choice, uh, Camera Lama, is uh, it's like it's it's a car. It's not like a spaceship or an alien thing. It's it's just a a slick, cool, classic car. But it totally fits with what we're talking about because it's John Wick's car, man. Yeah, it's John Wick's car. And And don't they like it gets like. Does it get busted up in the first or the beginning of the second one? Well, the second one, uh, it starts with him in the factory getting his car back, right? And then like, he drops it off to his buddy, right? And it gets stolen again, right? I don't know. Um, do we no? ever even... Not in the second do one? Do we ever even hear about the car again? I think it just takes it. Isn't it like well, John Leguizamo In the beginning, the Russian mafia takes his car, and then he tries to get it back because they kill his dog. And he's like, the car's over here, right? And Yeah, they steal it. And then at the beginning of the second one, he gets it back from Peter Stormara yeah. at the warehouse. Yep. And he yes. And John Leguizamo picks up because he beats the hell out of the car in the beginning of the second one. But yeah. then we never see it again. Yeah, you're right. We never see it again. Maybe we'll get it back get, in the fourth one. around chopping off his fingers. <laughs> yeah. I got to rewatch those. Dude, they're great. Uh, good choice, man. All right. Yeah, let's hear it. What do you got? Um, What's your second this choice? Is, this is... All right, your third choice. If you this is my, my third choice uh, on this list is... Um, man, I, I this movie... These movies have such a special place in my heart. Much like the Fujikoma, but even a little bit deeper because I saw this one when I was a kid. Uh, but it's the light cycles from Tron. Uh, mm, yes, and uh, and obviously in in the sequel in Tron Legacy, uh, which was an okay movie, it was pretty solid. It wasn't one of the best, but they look even better, you yeah, know, because they, uh, they have that whole arena battle and stuff like that. And it's just just a a, a feast for the eyes, you know, because they really at the time they were trying to push the envelope. They didn't quite pass that uncanny valley when it came to you know like youthifying uh, Jeff Bridges, you know, and having mm. to play Clue. But the, the light cycles themselves are, are awesome, man. They get the, the, just the, the cool glowing, like, aspect to them, like the new ones. Wonder, and then they leave, like, the trail behind. You yeah, know? how long is that trail that they leave behind? Because you imagine driving down on the street. Yeah, you, you kind of like, make, like, a left turn. And all of a sudden, there's, like, a seven-car pileup because you just <laughs> somebody. <laughs> Good thing in the, in the in the you can turn them off and on, which is very important. Okay, that's good. But that's part of the game, and if, and for anybody who's old enough that played the arcade game, this was one of the games you were you could play because you had to kind of head them off and run them into your your light walls. Yeah, you know, so um, you get some real road rage there. That f- cut me off, <laughs> light wall. You can I never think. say take <laughs> the same route twice. You know, around yeah. town. It's like a game of snake. Yeah, but yeah, those are cool, man. I like what they did in the Legacy remake. I mean, the picture you put here is uh is nice. It's a good reminder. Plus, you get that matching suit. Yeah, and I know uh, they did a lot with like kind of dark spaces and light. Basically, yeah. it's darkness and light, and just a really uh, popping light. Yeah, yeah, just the the reflections and stuff like that. They they almost in the in the remake, you know, it, it, it they're like really down low in. In the in the bike, you know, I and in the first one, obviously they were as well, but it's, it was entirely encased. Yeah, in the bike, and they actually did feature one like an actual old style light bike from the first movie in the second movie. It was like a classic, yeah. like an antique, uh, in in Jeff Bridges' garage. So just like so cool, like kind of capture the imagination and stuff like that. And the way they use them in the arena battles is just was just awesome. So and I mean they challenged each other, right? Didn't they challenge each other? What do you mean? To like the light cycle battle. Well, I mean, in the second one, you know, the, the you know, uh, what is it? Uh, Jeff Bridges' son, uh, Flynn's son, gets taken into the computer world and he meets Clue, which is a computer program made by Jeff Bridges' character, mm-hmm. uh, Flynn's character. And then Flynn is the master of this kind of like whole area and he puts him in the in the games to kind of like kill him and like show up, show all the programs that the users are nothing, you know? I got to rewatch Tron, man. I never even understood it as when I watched it. Tron, the, the idea of Tron was like, it was kind of a bit of ahead of its time, but it was 
you know, like when we think about like the internet and the d- digital world, we don't think of it as much as concrete terms. Like in Tron, there were actual like transistors and circuits walking around, you know, and it was like very much like miniaturized versions of what you would see on like a circuit board. Mm. Now we're much more cerebral when we think about VR and alternate realities and stuff. It's a little more like fantastical and, and you know, more abstract. But the Tron, the Tron stuff was like very like, you know, what would it be like to be running around on that circuit board right there, you know? So. Back in the old days. Back in the olden days, yes. uh, we would run around in our circuit boards. We wouldn't imagine fantastical worlds. We'd have our light bikes <laughs> and our <laughs> our light ships and our light lights, lightly caffeinated drinks. Yes. Whoa. Is that is that the end of that one? That's the end. We can move on. All right. Okay. Speaking of <laughs> motorcycles, mine would have to be the brute chopper. From Halo Three, you know that giant thing with like a one wheel. It just got it's, it's a hover vehicle, over. right? Yeah, you can, so it's you like, can commandeer them. And yeah, you can the game. commandeer okay. them, and they're sometimes available in the multiplayer, but they're definitely available in the campaign. And you just mow people over with those things. <laughs> I mean, they have giant <laughs> spikes. They look like a battering ram because it's a giant one wheel in the front, and then the the part where you sit is actually a hover. Like there's a little. Oh, so one part is in contact with the ground, and the other part is it's not. It's just hovering. Oh, yeah. interesting. It's got a little jet on the back, but the I entire never played thing's Halo just. 3, so just covered in spikes so like you don't even have and you can like boost and everything because that's got little jets on it that make it go faster but you don't even have to boost to like kill someone in the game you just literally run over them because it's <laughs> it's heavy and it sucks to drive and it's got these slow like needle cannons on the front that you can shoot people with spikes and just ruin their day so i think that would be awesome to have in like la traffic that's just, like, awesome run man. over people and send a spike through somebody that like cuts me <laughs> off That'd be cool. Can you imagine? I mean, it's very much it very much invokes like Mad Max vibe. Oh, it's, where it's to go on the road is like taking your life. I in just your need hand, a couple so. like spears hanging off the back. Yep, with like some wild boy shit on it. And, uh, <laughs> war boys, the war boy stuff. Yeah, with like some explosive on the end of the spears. But yeah, dude, that thing is pretty cool. I mean, I was like trying to think of vehicles yesterday. I was like, huh. Because there's not a lot, if you think about it. There's well, not a lot of noble, like, Well, it depends chariots. on what we've been exposed to. You yeah. Know? I'm sure uh, people are screaming at their radios right now. What about uh, this? What about this vehicle? Don't you didn't ever mention the thing? Send it an email. Send us an email. Say, when, we'll you park, it. when you park your car. When you park your car. Email. Yeah, don't do it right now. Uh, that's but it, no, Yeah, the Brute Chopper, uh, I think it came out. Correct me if I'm wrong, folks. I think it was introduced in Halo 2. And then it was kind of mastered in Halo 3, and it's gone on since then. It kind of became a like a staple in the game. But yeah, when it first came out, I was like, this thing is brutal. No pun intended. <laughs> but Because <laughs> it's driven by brutes. But uh, no, it's, it's I love the craftsm- craftsmanships on it. It just looks like a, a war machine. Yeah. And that's what attracted it to me. Because, I mean, my other choices... Most of them are not fantasy. They're actually real that I just want. I, I appreciate that, though, because that my mind immediately goes to the stars. Yes. Uh, and we actually don't, I, as I'm thinking about it, we don't have a lot of, like, uh, like grounded vehicles. Like, yeah. as in grounded in reality. You yeah. Know? I mean, my next two are pretty grounded in reality. Actually, but... I got one. I, this is off the top of my head. Yeah, but sure. Just because I'm playing it now. For you, it's been a couple of weeks, uh, my dear audience. But for me, it's it's been <laughs> just a little bit. But uh, your horse from G- Ghost of Tsushima. Because your horse, you get a to horse. name it. like, And you can get like different saddles and looks for it, you know. Mm. And uh, my name, mine, Nobu. And uh, after the sushi restaurant, yeah, no, not after the su- after the Nobu, after the Japanese thing that is a Nobu. I don't know what Nobu means actually, and I have to look it up right now. Uh, but uh, you're very like he's like very kind to the horse, and he carries you everywhere, right? Yeah, he's like your your noble steed, you know. And you like you can choose to feed him and pet him and like take care of him and stuff, and that'll like improve his mood, and he'll like he'll like uh, Run act better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's always saying like, "You're a good horse, Nobu. I would never trade you for anything." It's like, whoa, no, be careful, you know. See, I wanted to get a horse. That's a great idea. I wanted to get a horse. I started watching Yellowstone. Oh. And I was like, I want to start ranching. But yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I got grit. I went to ranger school. I could do ranch life. <laughs> yeah, Yellowstone is awesome. Do I was you like, know anything about ranching? I've. Uh, it's more than just buying a horse and then shooting people. What? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What else is there? <laughs> 
Well, no, I'm kidding. No, I actually went to a really? ranch retreat. Yeah. I went to a ranch retreat, like well, a veteran. And you ate a testicle. Yeah, I ate a bolt. We castrated the calves and then fresh testicles. We ate them. I ate two because I forgot to record the first one to prove that I ate a testicle. Oh, uh, you got to um, get that recording. Yeah, but uh, no, it was really fun. We like, they roped the dudes. And there was this kid there who was like, must have been eight years old, like roping the cattle and like pulling them. And everything. It was nuts. <laughs> I mean, not literally. I mean, no pun intended. It was nuts. But, uh, Hey-o. yeah, but, uh, yeah, they like, uh, branded the horse. Uh, we branded the calves and, like, gave them their shots and everything and roped yeah, them. I'm starting to think you do intend to make all these puns. No, I'm it's saying just, it's not intended, but you're really good at it. Yeah, it's kind of, they're, it's, they just, you're acting a little nutty. You know? They just come to oh, me. Yeah. No, just really don't do that. Oh. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Oh, okay, I got it. Don't you don't have to leave a comment now anymore, folks. Uh, so you can choose what name to give your horse in Ghost of Tsushima, and I named him Nobu, which means trust. Trust. You can name oh, it gives him, you a list of names. Yeah, you, name you can name him Nobu, Sora, Kage, or Kaze. So I would name Sora, him Kage. What would Kage means shadow? Exactly. Yeah, I knew that. And then Kaze means wind, and Sora means sky. Yeah, shadow is cool. Yeah. Shadow facts. I love that there's like an emotional attachment there because it's an animal, you know. Not that you can't get emotionally attached to a Mustang or, uh, you know, or a bull testicle. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm going to bring one next. I love this one. I I, I think it's just because I want to talk about this game franchise. Go for it, man. It so much. It's the USG Ishimura from the Dead Space franchise. It's actually in Dead Space 1 and then a little bit in 2, but it's basically where the main events of the video game take place in Dead Space 1. You're Isaac Clarke. You're on your way to go find out what happened to the ship and also your girlfriend at the time. Uh, and the the game takes place on the USG Ishimura, which is a mining ship. They call mm. it a planet cracker, where it can planet take crack. large chunks out of, a, out of a planet and like break them down and process them, you know? Mm. And you lose contact with it, and then you when you get on the ship, you realize it's full of necromorphs, these monsters that have been... It's People that have been mutated into monsters. It's right. awesome. The game, the game itself was one of the scariest games I ever played, uh, and the second one was even better. Third one was just okay, but um, yeah, it's this giant, it's this, this giant vessel that looks. It's not like it's not in a sleek design. It's actually kind of harsh and like overbearing in its design. Uh, if you look at the picture there. Uh, which I like, like it's yeah. almost like a cathedral kind of like, kind of like feel, you know. Yeah, I would nickname it Ritz. Why? Because it's a planet cracker. I walked right into that one, didn't I? Yes. Just let the pain sink in. Let's just let the pain sink. For me. Okay, let's move on. Um, <laughs> one thing I love about uh, certain spaceship designs, and they kind of did it in the new, the Dune remake, the Denny Villeneuve Dune remake. That's hard to say. But they don't design ships with like this kind of aerodynamic aspect to them because a lot of ships they you know they 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 look like they could like fly in an atmosphere, but not necessarily true for a ship that would never be within an atmosphere, like mm. just a spaceship. So it doesn't have to have any kind of like sleekness to it, you know. And it's the, and you look at the uh, USG Ishimura, and it just looks like it, it could never fly. <laughs> but it but it's it okay because like it's meant to be for space. Yeah, it does kind of have a bug like kind of kind yeah, of aspect like a to it or something yeah exactly there could be some aspects of like because it's definitely for harvesting rocks and planets and stuff rocks, like that so rocks and things uh and it's massive too it's great what's great about the game is that you you go through all the different sections of the ship and it just has this massive feel to it right. you know so that would be uh i like it i like it a lot i like it i like it well you know what i like mm. because you skipped me last time mm-hmm. so I got, i'm gonna yep. do two we in right now. right to one mine uh but Back to, back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, I want so madity. I want Mad-ity. a Polaris M Razor, <laughs> and the one that I used in Regiment. You know why? Because these things are fucking cool. They and look like fast. little all-terrain vehicles, like little like dune buggies. Yeah, man, they are four by. They're 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 four by fours, and they you can fit you can actually you can fit five dudes, two in the front, three in the back. And the ones we had had panels on them, so you can mount two forties to the sides, and you could actually put a fifty cal on the back if you wanted to. Mm. Um, so, and they're fast. So, oh. like the their things are fast. And I actually got I was one of the few dudes to get qualified on those, and I still have my certs for it. You had to get qualified. Yeah, so you know, in the military, you have to like qualify on every single yeah, vehicle you, gotta you drive. Yeah, you get that piece of paper, man. Yeah, you got to get the piece of paper. But this one was actually hard to get qualified on because you needed to go to a specific course. Mm. So I ended up getting really lucky and going to the M Razor and Mini Bike course, and it was like two weeks Sounds of just fun. like yeah, it was the best course ever. We just went to the uh, 
the AT park there, the all terrain park, mm-hmm. and uh, or is the ATV park there? And on Lewis, they have one. Oh, and they literally, yeah, we just drove there and shredded for two weeks straight. And then on the last <laughs> day, we ran like a quick hit practice mission, and boom, I got my certs. It was so much fun. Nice. And uh, these things are so fast and agile. Like, well, we had some that were um, gasoline at first, and they were super fast. Like, we got we took them all the way up past 80 miles an hour. Wow. And they're like little off off road, like little dune buggy things. So they get fast, and then they replaced them with diesel uh, supercharged ones. And I don't know why they went with that because the first ones we had ran off just regular premium gas. Okay. And the second ones ran off diesel. And I don't know why they made it. It had to have been a cost thing or something. Must have. <laughs> but but then they also supercharged them. So like when you you could hear like the wheel go uh. like when you went, and they were fun still. But I like the gas ones better because the tr- uh, the pedal response was more reactive. Is um, it is it just me or does it look like the back wheels are smaller than the front wheels? Or no, are they they're the all same the size? same size. Okay, it's just right. the angle of that picture. Angle, okay. But yeah, man, those things were super fun. They're super cool, easy to drive. Anybody can sit there. Like I'd be like, this means he's like, you know that scene in Fury when he hands him the gun. He's like, teach yeah. him how to use. It. He's yeah. like, you open this. Now you're killing. You close it. Now you're not. It's like the same sh- with yeah. that thing. It's like you put this in park. All right, press that. It t- turns on. Left to go left. Right to go right. There's your brake. There's your pedal. Good luck. And like, <laughs> yeah, they were, they were so much fun, man. So I like. I what, really want one of these. Is there a mission set that these would be ideal for? Uh, quick you insertion. You, quick insertion. Okay. That's exactly what they were. I mean, like, there's no, there's no ballistic armor on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah ju- it's just a cage. It's just yeah. A roll you're literally, cage. you just have a roll cage, and no it's even easy. doors. You can get out of them super fast. You can get out of, you can get in them super fast. Super quick insertion. I mean, in this vehicle's case, it's like your defense is your offense and speed. Because, I mean, you can engage sitting there. I mean, in the picture, you can see the dude's, like, raising his gun out the window. Yeah. It's easy to, to he's got, it like, looks like in this picture that you used, he's even got, like, a little uh, mounted, yeah, like, articulating arm system. Yeah, yeah, so that's the pinnel. So they mount, and you can, like, you know how some Humvees have, like, on the back, you could have that yep. tripod or the pinnel system that basically you mounted a gun. You could keep, like, a can of ammo. Yeah. Same thing right there. We actually had this uh, when we had, when we were in Iraq, one of the teams that was kind of out of way, uh, took off a couple of the doors on their humpy and did that articulating arm thing. Yeah, so those things it. are super awesome, man. I mean, it's and it's not like yes, it's on my wish list, and you know, it's not impossible like some freaking dead space dumb spaceship. But, uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, but uh, it's like they're just so expensive. I mean, the M Razor, I think has a price tag of like upwards of thirty, forty grand just for the thing. Jeez. Sounds like military pricing to me. Yeah, no, it's they're super expensive. Let's see, the M Razor diesel for government. Um, let's see, the price is. I'm trying to look one up too. I'm not. I'm trying to look at the bare bones thing, but I don't. I th- it might be. Uh, might be too late. You know. Oh, they want to get. They want to get my email. Come on. Ah, oh, come on. What am I? Some sort of government contractor? Yeah. What do you think? I'm guessing like what, like hundred thousand or something like that. Probably. All surplus. Let's see. Surplus. Let's see what the surplus store says. Ooh. Ah, uh, 35, currently 40. For this one, 2014 M Razor ATV side by side off road vil- uh, military vehicle is um, currently there's 41 bids, and it, this one was sold by the Dale County Sheriff's Department. So, yeah, if you want one, you just got to fork up a couple $35,000. Mm. That's auction pricing, too. So, that they may have gotten a good deal. I don't know. But, yeah, that's on my wish list. Nice man. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. It is. You I'm get, out. I'm out of vehicles on this. You're wish out list. of vehicles I'm, on your I'm wish list. I'm scrambling to look for other vehicles. Oh, it's okay. I, I didn't think get through this more. fast. <laughs> no, because I have another. Oh, you do have one more. Remember, because you skipped me. Oh wait, oh, okay. I I just wanted to throw something in because you said a horse earlier, and I never thought of that as a vehicle, but I guess it is. And then you said Shadow Facts, but why not Shadow Facts? Yeah, Shadow He's Facts. He's the king of horses. Yeah, he is the king of horses. <laughs> yeah. That's how you summon him, folks. That's how you summon Shadow Fax if yeah. you're Gandalf the yeah, White. Yeah, Shadow Fax is good. He's the, the king of the horses. Well, I got to be white. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Samus' gunship. Have we talked about this yet? No. Samus' gunship is awesome. Uh, what's that? Well, actually, Cam got to go twice because you went twice. Oh, come on. Yeah. All right, well, I'm, I would love to talk about Sam's gunship now, after now, I mentioned my last one. Well, now sorry, you... we only have enough time for one more of uh, Cam's, and then we don't have any more time. Oh, oh man. man. You're lying to me. Possibly. Well, this one I want on my wish list is the MH6 Little Bird. 
Oh, the little bird. Yes, everybody knows what these things are. They're in Black Hawk Down. They've been in service for quite some time, over 30 years now. I actually think they're trying to retire them, which, but I say nay. I say don't retire them because they're so cool. But the M86 Little Bird is pretty much a miniature helicopter. It's got a pilot. It's got, you can fit two pilots up there mm -hmm. and like four dudes sitting off the Wait, side. Wait, you can fit side. four dudes in that? Yeah, I mean, if, it looks look at so this small. Picture. Look at that picture. They're fast roping off the side. And there's two pilots. Oh, there's I guess you're two right. people on each side, so you can fit like six, eight, eight dudes. No one, oh, two, man. three, four, five, six, six dudes in it. Not to mention, you can outfit them with some heavy, heavy, heavy firepower. Unfortunately, yeah, I remember the miniguns from Black Hawk Down. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I never got the chance to ride in one of these. I know a couple dudes did, uh, but I have only ridden in 47s and 60s. Yeah, me but, too. We got to use them for fire support on a couple training missions, and oh. like that minigun scene when he's l mowing them down. Yeah, it's a hundred percent true. <laughs> like when we were doing the training mission, they would do gun runs over us and just minigun the f out of something. But the one thing is, if you're underneath it, you get showered with brass. Oh uh, yeah, like you've hot, mentioned this before. Hot, yeah, hot brass, <laughs> hot hot brassing. Yeah, and it goes everywhere. Goes out of your shirt. It goes all over your hand. It hurts like a mother. And it hurts. And it hurts. But yeah, these things are, would be so cool to have because I mean, like, there's you can almost they're so small. Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever seen them be be transported? Like the the rotors just get collapsed down into one, and then you can literally with like three guys put it on a wheel and like push it down the rack. You know, it's funny. The first time I ever remember seeing these, now that I'm thinking about it, is in the uh, the old Magnum PI show. Yes, because his buddy flew. It looked like a mini bird, a little bird. It, looked, it was like a stunt helicopter, but it, uh, in the opening sequence, you can always see it like zooming around Hawaii. Uh, a little bit of old guy, a little bit of old guy reference for you there for you young whippersnappers. Get off my lawn. Yeah, get off my lawn. <laughs> and I mean, there's a lot of variants of these things too. I mean, the UH-6 is like the uh, the current military helicopter, mm -hmm. but then they also have like the OH-6, which is like the Vietnam version of it, or like the mm. older school. Wait, and those were around back then? Cool. Yeah, they Ooh. were, man. It looks like it. I mean, let's see. Hughes OH-6. Chaos! Yeah. Um, model the Hueys. It's civilian uh, helicopter. Oh, yeah. Vietnam War. Used. Wow. Uh, 160th used these in the Vietnam War. Ah. Yeah, so that was the pre predecessor. Okay. Predecessor to those. But, yeah, man, I would love to have, you know, just casual... When I'm a billionaire one day, just have a UH-6 that I go to, like, Ralph's with or something <laughs> and, like, park on the rooftop. Part, yeah, that's funny. And you could, too, because those things are, can get in and out of pretty tight spaces. Oh, yeah, they're know. so small. They're so small. Standing next to them, you're like, this thing flies. <laughs> <laughs> and then they come up, and they freaking rain hell, all hell down on you, and you're like, oh, shit, yeah, they fly. They fly. So that concludes my wish list. Uh, I want to bring in, I want to bring in one more or maybe two more because I want to keep talking about these things because they're awesome and they make me happy. I'm gonna bring in Samus Aran's gunship for the Metroid series and I'm saying all my stuff. Um, that that energy drink is kicking in actually. No, uh, Sam. So so in Metroid, the main character Samus has a gunship that she flies around in, and uh, I'm just looking at different models. The main model almost kind of looks like her helmet. Actually, you want this thing from here? the front view. Yeah, what I love about it is that it's a it's a one person like it's an all in one one person ship. You're flying it's, head, basically. Uh, but you, it's like it's I can just imagine like the inside. You get a few shots of the inside sometimes, but uh, it's just for her. Like that's all she needs. You know, I, I imagine she's probably got a little like living quarters things in there. You know, and this is what she flies around in and stuff, and it's awesome, man. It's just like a really like, got a really cool compact design. I guess they kind of change it up when they do. Uh, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, it kind of changes a little bit, but uh, it's cool. I like having like a custom, the idea of a, of a custom ship that's just for you uh, is really appealing to me. And this and the the Metroid series has been around for so long, man. Well, I respectfully disagree, because I think this thing is ugly as hell. What? And it does not look appealing. How dare you? It's okay, man. How dare hey, you? I'm just telling you that you're wrong, but <laughs> I'm not telling you what to do or how to think. Just saying that you're wrong. I'm just, just saying, saying wrong. what your ideas are dumb. Yeah. And I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, no, you like, don't have to humor me, man. That's okay, yeah. I just, not a, <laughs> no, I'm just going to leave it as not a fan. It's not a fan. <laughs> but uh, what else? You, got, you had one I'm more, right? sticking my guts. No, that was my one more. That uh, was your one more? Yeah, unless you had one more. No, I don't have another one. I, I, I you mean, know what? We could, how about we just go to our fan question? You want to do the fan question? All right. Yeah, go I ahead and read care. it because I, I feel like I've been reading all the fan You've questions You've been talking a lot and you just shut up now. 
<laughs> All right, this is from David Jewett via email. Uh, what are some things from pop culture you'd like to see in the military? Uh, this is cool. This is a good question. What are some things from pop culture? I feel like we got something similar, uh, a question similar to this a while back. No, know? we answered the question. Yeah, the, you answered it oh, via the email. Yeah, you emailed him directly, but oh, I think it's a fun question. that For everybody. Yeah, there. everyone should yeah. hear your answers because uh, okay. I like both your answers. Oh, man, what, did, what was my answer? I, I know can't my remember. answer. You want me to answer for you? I know my you said, answer. Mechs. Oh, mechs. Yeah, like mech warrior mechs. Yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. Any giant walking robot, especially like the Titan. The Titan specifically from Titanfall 2 because uh, they're so agile and mobile. I feel like a lot of mechs, there was a video game called Rain of Fire or Ring of Fire, and it was like a fictional World War II video game from PlayStation 2, I think. Mm. And you had mechs, but they were in the style like – imagined if like world war ii kind of era technology you know mm. and you had a mech and then you had like a fire team that was like a support team for the mech and they all had different abilities and stuff i'm like that is such a cool idea but the idea of having mechs in real life they're power power issues mobility issues you know like they just don't like it wouldn't be all that quick yeah so like if we could get something akin to the titan the super mobile kind of thing that would be uh-huh. what i would do you, know what you, I you have that you have that look of like you're laughing on the inside because yeah. you think I'm a nerd. No, no, no. no. I just <laughs> think my I, I just think my answer was really funny. <laughs> what was it? Yeah, I said co-ed showers, <laughs> like in Starship Troopers. Oh, I'm thinking of like vehicles <laughs> and stuff. You're just thinking of any concept. Oh from yeah, pop it's like from po- pop culture, and it was the first thing that popped up because I'm pretty sure I responded immediately, and I was like co-ed showers, <laughs> respectfully, camera fast, Starship and that's all Troopers. I said. Yeah, like Starship Troopers. You know how they're all in the shower together. Yep. I was like, what themes? From pop culture, would you like to see in the actual military? <laughs> it's like college showers, boost morale, boom, easy yep. answer. <laughs> uh, and with that, we'll go to our and game. all the accompanying <laughs> problems that would be that would accompany the problem. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ, that uh, would be that would be nightmare. Private Smith, why are you? <laughs> yeah, why why have you been in the shower with Private Private Avery for yeah. four hours? I don't know why John, I thought of that. Private number. Johnson's yeah. Johnson has Private been at attention for the past yeah. four hours. The dude takes long ass showers. <laughs> All right, let's move on sleekly and smoothly. Sleekly, from smoothly. That Great transition. Question. That was a good question. To the game. To the game. To the game. To the races. Chris, are you the game master or are you the game master? I am the game master. Okay. Hey, look at me. I'm the game master now. Okay. Uh, so this game is one we've played before. I'm really excited to play it. Uh, but this is for you, Cameron. I will be the game master. Okay. Um, since you're our very own gun for hire, don't ask me what that means. This game is tailored for you. This game is one we haven't played in a while. It's called Slangin' It. Slangin' It. I'm going to read off some military slang terms, and you tell me if they're real or okay. made up. Okay. Yeah. Simple. I hate this game. What? Because every branch has their own slang. You're right. Yeah. But goes... I will play because I'm a good sport. You are a good sport. Hopefully you'll do as bad as I did on my solo game. No one can do that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. If you get one answer right, you will do better than me. Okay. Uh, so here's the warm-up. Fart sack. Fart sack, that's a real thing. First, you're a sleeping bag. Yeah, you're right. Sleeping bag, I have flight suit as well. But sleeping bag, I remember fart sack from... You know what's I'm funny? Fart bag. sack, real, it's such a true thing. Because when you're... <laughs> Oh and yes. When you're in your sleeping bag and yep. you- <laughs> it's not a big space, man. <laughs> Dude, you got and it travels. Yeah, and if it does, it only has one way to go yeah. up, and that's towards your face. You gas yourself out. Yeah, you gas yourself. Yeah. Honestly, I'll sit there and I'll like toot in my sleeping bag, and I will just start laughing my. I ass will do out. like the fluffy thing. I'll have to fluff <laughs> yeah. it, get the air flowing. You know, it's so fun, <laughs> uh, and it's just like it's, it's a fart sack. It's <laughs> so true and tried and true. Yep, it literally is. And only yeah, only made up by. Uh, uh, an organization mostly made up of men, you know. <laughs> I love that name, dude. Okay, moving <laughs> on. That was a good one. All right, here's your first official question. Okay. Officer's candy. Officer's candy? Officer's candy. Real or fake? Fake or real? Never heard that. Officer's candy. I'm going to say it's real. It's just something, what is it, like a pen or a pencil or something? Uh, It's correct. It's, it's a real term. Um. For extra points, uh, navy it's a Navy term used by sailors to describe the scented cake placed in the urinal. Uh, officer Officer's candy. candy, yeah. Okay. I don't, if I was an officer, I wouldn't eat that. <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, good, you got that right. Okay. Um, next one, bumper car. Bumper car. Yeah, real um, or fake? Fake or real? A bumper car. Give me that bumper car. Can you use it in a sentence? Yeah, can you use it in a sentence? Is it a verb? 
a noun, an, an adjective. That would be a noun. You know, I've actually never heard of bumper car, and uh, there's a lot of different names for like vehicles. I've started using the term army car for like Humvees because <laughs> I think it's wow. really silly sounding. Yeah. So I call like whenever I was like, yeah, get in the Jeemer or like get in the Humvee, you know, get in the Vic. I'm always like, get in the army car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna I mean, go. Yeah, I I could. Yeah, I'll go with real. I just don't know what it what it's what it could be referring to. Yeah, wrong. It is fake. It's a fake. Uh, but it could be a cool name for a tank. Yeah, bumper, bumper car. car. Yeah. yeah, that was the option. Okay. <laughs> Next one, a baked steak. Baked steak. Baked steak. Baked steak. A baked steak. A baked steak. Yeah, baked. Like isn't baked like you know cake yeah, but I mean, a big steak yeah. yeah big steak well i mean most of their f-ing steaks are bake them anyway <laughs> but what could it be referring to a baked steak i've never heard that before i'm gonna say it's not real not really you sure yeah it is fake it's it is not real yeah. correct it, or it could sound it's maybe sounds like something like an a really old mre or a new recruit with a sunburn mm, a, a baked, baked steak. steak yeah Nice, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know he's sitting there like, yeah, that could be that. I, that's yeah. what I love is that you come <laughs> yeah. up with. It's not that it's fake or real. So if it's fake, what could it be? I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's good. I'm like, what? I like the effort. Sorry, I'm not. <laughs> I'm never good. in the military, and no, honestly, like I'm not dumb enough to be. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey. Chris got a real job. I represent that remark. Yeah. All right, next. Salad bar. Salad bar? Yeah. Salad bar. Salad bar. Yeah, sure. I sure it's a real thing. There's salad bars in every uh, <laughs> every cafeteria. You, you know, you understand what slang is, right? Yeah. Well, they're not gonna. It's not it's literally not a referring to a salad because it's bar. actually referring to a salad bar. It would it'd be referring to something else. So I would say it's a it's a real military word, and it probably have to do with someone rank or something. Correct and correct. Yeah. References the service ribbons found on a military uniform. The salad bar. Damn. All the multicolored little ribbons. That GWAT, that <laughs> yeah. GWAT ribbon that yeah, you everybody salad gets. Salad bar. Yep, salad bar. I'd never heard that before, never but heard. I'm going to trust Chris on this one. Uh, salute and shoot. Salute and shoot. Salute and shoot. Salute and shoot. Is it C H U T E or S H O O T? S H O O T, like the okay, typical pew pew okay. shoot. I'm thinking it was like saluting, like parachute. Salute or something. and shoot. Yeah. Salute and shoot. Well, if you're saluting someone overseas, you might as well start shooting because they're gonna get shot. <laughs> Everybody goes after uh, the officer. Yeah, you, yeah, you never salute people overseas because then the snipers know who's they in know charge. The snipers are. Uh, that's old school. That's old school. Yeah. Um. Salute and sh- I'm a, I've never heard that before. I'm gonna say it's false. Correct. It is false. It's a fake term, uh, but it could be the nickname for an officer people don't particularly like. Yeah. Salute. You're like, ha ha. Salute him. <laughs> Crazy man. <coughs> I'm dying. Oh, excuse me. All right. Uh, we got two more. Two more. Uh, this one is a left-handed monkey wrench. Left-handed monkey wrench. That's a real thing. What is it? It's like, it's something really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are correct. It is a real thing, um, but it's actually a tool that doesn't exist. It's like when you go tell a private to go pick up some grid squares. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a tool. It's, you, there's no it's like a left-handed. Pool. It's like, go pass me a left-hand monkey wrench. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there's no, it's just a monkey wrench. Yeah, go pick up some grid squares, yeah. some chem light batteries. Some uh, chem light batteries, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the grid squares one always got me. Yeah, yeah. I so think somebody might have done like, that. Oh, Sergeant, you go out, you're like, I fucking oh. need some grid squares. Oh, what are they? oh man. Oh, and then you're like, he, you, and you come, you come back, and you see it on his face when you're coming back. He's like, there was nothing. There. Really? You didn't ask supply for, it, and they're like, you're an idiot. This is no such oh, thing. Oh no, this was like in this was like during like land nav in basic training, and it was like a real, it was a quick joke. He's like, turn around, go look, go find those grid squares I placed in the field, and I turn, I go and uh, and I turn back around, and he's like. Just get over here, Private. We're in a grid square. <laughs> uh, and then here's the last one, last Cameron. One. You're doing really good. I think you got most of them right. I missed except like one. one. Just one. Just okay, one. so you're the opposite of how I am during games. Yes, but this one could be two. Hit the silk. Hit the silk? Hit the silk. I'm going to go hit that silk, man. Um, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Make it sound so dirty. Yeah, go hit the silk. It's definitely a term for going to bed. Um... But I've never heard it before. Because usually we say, okay, rack out, lights out. Mm-hmm. 
I'll say it's Air Force term. Okay. Because it's silk sheets because those motherfuckers. Because <laughs> they're all asleep. And yeah, it's... I'm going to say it's a real term for go to bed. Okay. You are right, but in a wrong sort of way. You are yeah. you are correct. It's a real term, but it's for ejecting from an aircraft and utilizing a parachute. Oh, the really? Silk. Hit, Hit the, the silk. silk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there you well, go. I still got it. You still got it. Yeah, you're you're nine out of ten, man. You're yeah. you're ninety percent. Good for you. That's good. Which one did I miss again? Uh, it was uh, I was it a bumper car? Yeah, bumper car. You I even maybe, said I've been... never heard that one before. Yeah. And I don't think it's real, but I'll go for it anyways. But most of the time, you you had good instincts because I haven't I hadn't heard of some of these, but you know, you like you say, other branches yeah, utilize man, these man. terms too. You know, so good job, man. You Thanks, passed with man. flying colors. That was colors. fun. I like that one. Yeah, I like the game. That fun. was good. That was good. Well. well <laughs> well folks that's all the time we have for this episode of pcfm we hope you guys enjoyed this redux of vehicle wish list let us know what's on your wish list by sending us an email to pcfm podcast at gmail.com is where we can take it. folks go check out shift fire it's monty cameron's uh standalone site uh we explore all things military and firearms culture. It's uh, it's blown up we're really happy with all the support you guys have given us shift fire on youtube you can also get a hold of the PCFM podcast. You can uh, check out our episodes on YouTube. Uh, we give the visual episode with extra content. You can also get a hold of us on Instagram, PCFM podcast, or through email, PCFM podcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you guys. If you want to hang out with me, I still stream live on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, twitch.tv slash my happy self. Nice. And if you guys want to support my streetwear brand, go ahead and Check out Kit God Apparel. That's K-I-T-G-O-D Apparel on Instagram or on our website, www.kitgodapparel.com. Thank you guys so much for listening to this week's episode of PCFM. And as always, drive safe and cue music. music.